This video looks at the effect of changing compensator gain on the gain margin. So the first five videos looked at the definition and computation of margins for a simple case. And what we want to do now is start moving the emphasis towards feedback analysis and, after that, design. We're going to assume our standard simple feedback loop like this one here with compensator M and a system G, but the subtle difference is we're now going to assume the compensator M of S is given by some scalar gain K times M dash of S. And we're going to ask ourselves what happens as we change K? How do the margins change? Now, the focus of this particular video is on the gain margin. So if we look at this box here, we're giving you just a reminder of how the gain margin is defined. First, you find the phase crossover frequency, omega p. That is, you solve for the frequency, so that's the argument of mg equals minus 180 degrees. And then the gain margin is given by this formula here. It's 1 over the modulus of m of j omega g g. Oh, that should be a p in there. I do apologize. j omega p g of j omega p. And the question we're going to ask here is what's the impact on this gain margin of changing the compensator gain k? And again, you're reminded that we're going to write m equals k m dash. So within this m of s there is a, a, a scalar gain k which we're going to change and ask how that affects the gain margin. Let's start with an example then. Let's look at what happens to our Bode diagram when we change the gain. So we've got a simple system here, G. You can see it, 0.4 over S plus 2, S plus 1. We've got a compensator M of S, which we're writing as K into S plus 5 over S. And what we're going to do, just cross that, is we're going to look at different values of K and ask ourselves, how did the Bode diagrams change? And what can we read from this? So here are the Bode diagrams, and you'll see the legend given here to make it clear. So k equals 1 is the green line, k equals 0.5 is the blue line, k equals 4 is the red line, and k equals 10 is the cyan line. So what is happening to these Bode diagrams? So we'll do several observations one at a time. First observation then, the phase plot does not change. If you look down here at this phase plot, you'll see it's the same for all the different values of k. And you might be saying, well, yeah, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Because I've not introduced any more phase. Um, but it's an important observation to remember. When you just change k, you don't change the phase plot. What about the gain plot? Well, the gain plots have moved up and down by 20 log to the base 10 of k. So if you look, you'll see I've got k equals 0.5. 20 log to the base 10 of 0.5 is going to be something like minus 6 decibels. And so if you look up here, what you'll see is to get from the green plot to the blue plot, you've gone down by 6 decibels. If I choose k equals 4, then that corresponds to roughly 12 decibels. And so you'll see to get from k equals 1 to k equals 4, the plot is moved up by 12 decibels. And the key thing is if I look at these gaps all the way along, look at all these gaps, there are 12 decibels the whole way along. And finally, of course, if I do k equals 10, that's going to correspond to 20 decibel uplift, which you can see in the diagram above. Now, what's the impact of doing this change? And I've just put it up in this, you'll see in this box here, the impact is the gain crossover frequency is changing. Look, when you've got k equals 0.5, there's the crossover frequency. k equals 1, here's the crossover frequency. k equals 4, here's the crossover frequency. k equals 10, here's the crossover frequency. And the final observation is the phase crossover frequency is constant. Here it is down here for this example, and you'll notice it's not dependent on k. So a summary then. When we change the gain, only the gain plot changes, and hence the gain crossover frequency changes because the gain plot is changing, but the phase crossover frequency is fixed.
and we might want to ask ourselves what are the consequences of this observation and we're going to look solely at gain margins in this video. So how is gain margin defined? Well here's the formula we solve for the phase crossover frequency omega p and then we solve omega such that the argument of mg equals minus 180 and then the gain margin is 1 over modulus of m modulus of g and again that subscript has uh, gone wrong or if you put it into decibels minus 20 log to the base 10 modulus of m g now what we've done you remember as we've said let's assume that m of s can be given as k times m dash of s and so if I now substitute this into the formula we've got for the gain margin then this is what you get you get the gain margin is given as minus 20 log to the base 10 of the modulus of m dash times g and then minus 20 log to the base 10 of k and so you'll notice the gain margin is changing by this term at the end. So the gain margin changes by minus 20 log to the base 10 of k and that's a very simple formula. So the gain margin changes uh, by minus 20 log to the base 10 of k when you change k. So here's an example of using that. Given the gain margin is 17 and a half decibels when k equals 1, find the gain margin for k equals 0 0.5, 4 and 10. And what we're going to do is simply use the formula we've derived on the previous page. So what we've said is the gain margin changes as minus 20 log to the base 10 of k. Let's try k equals 0 0.5 then. So if k equals 0 0.5, then the gain margin is going to be what it was, that was 17 and a half, minus 20 log to the base 10 of k, now k was 0 0.5, so we get minus 20 log to the base 10 of 0 0.5, and that's going to give me 23.5. And you'll notice I didn't have to resketch the boat diagrams, I didn't have to do any difficult computations, I just wrote the answer down by inspection. What about k equals 4? Well again, same formula, the gain margin is going to be what it was, 17.5, minus 20 log to the base 10 of k, where k is now 4, and so you're going to end up with five and a half. If k equals 10, you're going to get 17 and a half minus 20 log to the base 10 of 10, which gives you minus two and a half. And again, you'll see this gain margin is now negative, and you can very quickly find what value of k takes you from a positive gain margin to a negative gain margin. And here's the figure just to illustrate what was going on. So the gain margin is worked out along this vertical line we've marked here because that's the phase crossover frequency and you'll see with k equals 1 the gain margin was this distance here which we said was about 17.5 you'll see when k equals 0.5 the gain margin was bigger we went all the way down to here and that's what we got in our formula when k equals 4 the gain margin was much smaller it's about this distance and when k equals 10 you'll see the gain margin is now negative. We've gone above the zero decibel line. Now, a different sort of question. Given g of s, m of s is given as k over s, s plus 1, s plus 5, obtain the gain margin for k equals 2, 10, and 100. And what we've done is we've given you the Bode diagram for capital K equals 1 and told you that for that particular value of k, you've got 29 and a half decibels. Now all I need to do is use exactly the same insight as before. I simply say the gain margin is what it was for k equals 1 minus 20 log to the base 10 of k. So if I do k equals 2, then what you're going to get is 29.5 minus 6. If I do k equals 10, you're going to get 29.5 minus 20. And if I do k equals 100, I'm going to get 29.5 minus 40. So you'll see, really straightforward. If I wanted to, I could add the sketches 
onto this particular graph. I could do an, another line here and another line here and so on to show the impact of changing k. However, there is an easy way of doing it. What you can do is you can say the impact, for example, of doing k equals 2 is to move the line up by 6 decibels. So equivalently, I could say that this is going to become the 0 decibel line. Sorry, my line's not very horizontal. So the, the same impact of moving the boat diagram up is to move the axis markings down. So where you've got minus 20, you'll have minus 26. Where you have minus 40, you'll have minus 46. Um, sorry, I've done that the wrong way. This happens sometimes. I'll just correct that. Where you've got minus 20, you've got minus 14. Where you've got minus 40, you've got minus 34 and so on. Where you had 0, you had plus uh, 6. Now, for this particular example, we want you to verify your answers with MATLAB just to get used to the fact that we should keep using MATLAB to reinforce our work. So let's move to MATLAB. There we go. And what I'm going to do, so let's just pull up the window, and you can see here's my system, which I gave you there. And here's the margin plot. And you'll see what have we got at the top. We had initial margin. Uh, we didn't need the phase margin, but the initial gain margin, 29.5 decibels. What happens if I put a gain of 2 in? So I'll go margin g times 2. And what do you notice? 23.5, which is 29.5 minus 6, as expected. Margin g times 10. What do you get? 9.5, which is 29.5 minus 20. And margin g times 100 minus 10 and a half as expected. Right, what about this question? Find k such that the gain margin is 15 decibels. And you're given that this boat diagram has got k equals 1. So remember, all we're doing is changing the gain. So first I'm going to look and find out, well, where's the phase crossover frequency? It's about here. What's the current gain margin, which is calculated in this region? Well, we've given it to you here in case you didn't spot. The current gain margin is 2 decibels. So if I want 15 decibels, then what I'm saying is that 20 log to the base 10 of k has got to be, or so I should put minus 20 log to the base 10 of k, um, is going to have to give me plus 13 decibels. I actually want to increase the gain, sorry, increase the um, margin by 13 decibels. But the change in the gain margin is minus 20 log to the base 10 of k. So I end up with this formula. So how do I solve that? Well, I put the box here. What I've done is I've done the anti-log. So I've done 10 to the power of 13 over 20 which gives me 4.45. And then because I had this minus sign here, I know I've got to invert it. So you end up with k equals 1 over 4.45. Now you expected k to be less than 1, because in order to increase the gain margin, I've got to move the gain plot down, which means k is less than 1. Now a final example, just to show how you can save yourself a bit of effort. I've already got the bow diagram here for k equals 1. And what I'm asking you to do now is sketch the diagram for k equals 10 and 100. Now somebody who is being a bit careless would think, oh well, then uh, there we go, sketch, it's going to be something like that, and or something like that. That's a bit messy, quite difficult to do neatly. So here's an alternative, which is a lot quicker and a lot neater. All I do is, on the left-hand side, is I update these ticks, these marks. So if k equals 10, it's going to move the diagram up by 20 decibels. So what was the 0 decibel line becomes the 20 decibel line. What was the minus 20 decibel becomes 0. What was minus 40 becomes minus 20. Minus 60 becomes minus 40, and so on. So instead of actually having to do a sketch by hand, which could be a bit messy, all I've got to do is relabel the axis on the left. And now I've got the diagram for k equals 10. If you wanted to do k equals 100, I'll do it on the other side, then now you're lifting by 40. So you can get 60, 20, sorry, 60, 40, 20, 
0, minus 20, and so on. So what you'll notice is what seemed perhaps a challenging problem can be done in seconds. So a summary, we've shown that change in the gain causes a direct change in the gain margin of minus 20 log to the base 10 of k. The gain margin for any k um, can be inferred directly from the Bode diagram for k equals 1. So if you've got the Bode diagram for k equals 1, you can actually, from just using this formula here, get the gain margin for any other k. It's easy to choose k to get the desired gain margin using this shift property. And rather than resketching the Bode diagram for several different k, it's often easier just to recognize that this simple shift and work with a single plot. <coughs> However, now this is quite an important comment at the bottom. In practice, you'll find that most feedback design is linked to the phase margin, not the gain margin. And the impact on the gain margin is an observation only. We want the gain margin to be big enough. We want to know what's going on, but we're not actually going to fix it in general.